In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a grid and how to use it, either to draw skyscrapers or tile floors, to use it to enlarge or reduce an image, and to place objects to scale. This is the easiest way to draw a grid. Start with the horizontal measuring lines with units marked off, which can be uh, equal spacing or unequal, and connect each unit to a point up here, which we'll call the central vanishing point. Then draw a diagonal from one end of the horizontal measuring line across it to the other end up here. And where this line crosses the white lines at these spots, you draw the horizontal green lines uh, to finish your grid. And notice that the units in front get smaller as they go toward the distance. So we're going to use this approach to draw this brick walkway. Now, instead of using the vanishing point, we can use two measuring lines, one nearby and one in the distance, and have them uh, with the same number of units, and then connect units together. And again, draw the diagonal across this, these uh, lines, and where the diagonal crosses the white lines, you put in these red lines, horizontal red lines. And you can see that that uh, corresponds to the pattern of the bricks. So one way to use a grid is to mark off regular units, like these windows or tile, tile floor. And here again, I have two measuring lines, so I don't have to deal with the vanishing point. And I connect like uh, units together with the red lines. Then I put a diagonal again, the green diagonal. And where it intersects the red line at these blue dots will be a vertical line up. When putting in the reflection, have its edges vary from window to window so it looks like a reflection and not a thing. Another important use of grids is to enlarge or reduce an image. The easiest way to do that is to draw diagonals from each corner and then horizontal and vertical lines through the middle. And if you want the grid to be smaller, you do the same thing with the smaller rectangles. Uh, then you put that grid over your original and your new drawing paper, and then you, for example, copy this part of the image to the corresponding part on the grid. Now this is a much harder grid to draw and to use. First of all, you have to do a little math to figure out how many squares uh, you have to put in. And then uh, what if we want to use this square? Well, let's see, it's three over and three down. It's much easier to look at this grid and say, oh, I want this spot. And you know right away it's over here. So I definitely recommend doing your reducing enlarging uh, using this first grid. So when you're copying or, or enlarging an image, you have to use uh, drawing papers that have the same proportions. And to find that, you pick a, a corner and a diagonal. And let's say this green one is our original uh, paper. Uh, we just go over here to where we want the next paper to begin, go up to the diagonal and over, and there you have a blue paper that's the same proportion as the green one. Now, you can use this, for example, to reproduce, let's say, this green uh, rectangle uh, by connecting its corners to the corner of the paper and then extending these lines out and then you can draw another rectangle with the same proportions uh, that touch the four lines. And it's most useful when you have irregular shapes like this. So the uh, corner one here goes to corner one in our new blue uh, shape, and uh, two goes to two. And you have to keep the sides of the two shapes parallel in order for this to work. So here's an example of enlarging or reducing an image. So I chose a corner and I connected that with these orange lines to important points on this small bureau. And then 
continued the line down to a vertical line, which we're going to call the vertical measuring line. And these blue points represent the important parts of the original drawing. And then you draw horizontal lines from these new points to uh, draw your new bureau. So an unusual way to use a grid is to draw an uneven ter terrain. So here we have our grid that we've uh, previously learned how to draw. Then put vertical posts where you want the terrain to be higher and connect that with uh, this here, green lines. And then get rid of your construction lines and you're, uh, you end up with this, which is a drawing that looks more realistic than probably something you could do freehand. So another use of a grid is to put elements to scale. And a simple approach is to use converging lines as I did here, and then put your figures in the converging lines. And notice that I can move this figure over here, keeping her the same height, and everything will remain in scale. Now you can also use a grid. And again, you will need the converging line on top to dic dictate the height of the figures. But then you can put them in these uh, uh, squares in perspective uh, that will determine the width and depth of the figures. You can also put elements in sca to scale in a 3D grid. So I started again with the same grid that we uh, constructed before. And I continue lines up the sides of this uh, room, for example, even in the back. And then you need a vertical measuring line with units marked off. And you have these units converge toward this vanishing point on both sides. Uh, but when it reaches the back part, uh, the lines are horizontal. So anyway, you end up with this grid. So you can put elements to scale if the units on the horizontal measuring line and vertical measuring line are the same, so that these are squares with equal uh, sides. Then if you have, for example, this uh, figure, which is one unit wide and seven units tall, you can put her here or over here. You know, you can put her anywhere in the room and just count the uh, tiles until you go up seven times and over one. And similarly, I place this bureau over here. So everything can be in scale. Isn't that neat? 